All right, so now that we've learned some rules of exponents, let's talk about two other ones. Zero as an exponent and negative numbers as an exponent. Suppose we have x to the a divided by x to the a. The same thing divided by itself. Well, we all know that the same thing divided by itself is just equal to 1. I'm going to write it over here to the left because I'm going to do something out here, out here to the right next. All right, but um, based on those rules of exponents that we learned just uh, on the last video, we know that if we're dividing two terms and these two terms have the same base, that we keep the base and go top exponent minus the bottom exponent. And then we just say that, oh, well, a minus a is just 0. So you have x to the 0. Thus, x to the 0 is equal to x to the a minus a, which is x to the a over a, which is equal to 1. So therefore, x to the 0 has no choice but to be equal to the number 1. So that's uh, provided x itself is not 0, because if x was 0, you would have 0 in the denominator of a fraction here. You'd actually, you would actually have 0 over 0, and that's an indeterminate form. Um, so we throw that one out. So, th so the little note that we want to be aware of is the following. If x is not equal to 0, then x raised to the 0 power is equal to 1. That means anything else except for 0. Anything raised to the 0 power is equal to the number 1. You just simplify it down to that. Even if, for example, you had, say, uh, x plus 3 raised to the 0 power. If you run into that, you'd say, oh, okay, as long as, uh, as long as x does not turn out to be a negative 3, then this expression here just simplifies down to the number 1. So now what happens if we have, say, x squared divided by x to the fifth. Alright, well we know that if we did out longhand, we would have two x's on the top, five x's on the bottom. And then we can go through and say, alright, you and you go away, you and you go away, and what is that? leave. Well, it leaves 1 on the top, and it leaves x cubed on the denominator. That's how you would do it out longhand. But then we learned those properties, again, that say if we're dividing and have this two terms and they have the same base, then you keep the base, and you subtract the exponents. The top exponent. Go top exponent minus bottom exponent. Well, 2 minus 5 is negative 3. So we all agree that this thing right here on the left is true. We all agree that x squared over x to the fifth going out to the right here goes to 1 over x cubed. We all agree that's true. So therefore, x to the negative 3 has to equal 1 over x to the third. Notice we've gone from something that had a negative exponent, and we're able to convert it to something that has a positive exponent. So the little note that we want to make aware of is as follows. If you have x raised to some um, negative exponent, again x, again, x cannot be 0, uh, then it's 1 over x to the n. If you had, say, 1 over x to a negative exponent, then you could rewrite that as just x to the positive n. So let's look at some examples. All right, example 1. Simplify x to the negative 3 times y squared and all of that raised to the negative 4. Now there are many, many ways you could go about starting these problems, uh, but in the end we should all end up at the same spot. So I'm going to, since we just have one term inside here, I'm going to use that property that says we've got powers here raised to more powers, and so we, ec we multiply these exponents. So we would have x to the negative 3 times negative 4, which gives you 12 and then y to the negative 8. And then go, okay, so now what do I have? Well, I've got x to the 12th, that's cool. And then I have y to the negative 8. Well, we typically don't like to have negative exponents running around. We would prefer to have them written as with positive exponents. So we need to make y to the negative 8 have a, a positive exponent. And we can drop that down to the denominator and have x to the 12th 
over y to the eighth. And that's it. Everybody understand how we got y to the eighth in the denominator there? Because y to the negative eighth is the same thing as one divided by y to the eighth from the previous note that we had. And then when you multiply that times x to the twelfth, you get x to the twelfth over y to the eighth. Now that's formally what's happening. We just need to realize that since this is just one term, then this y to the negative eighth thing could just drop down to the denominator. If we had a plus sign in between this x to the twelfth and y to the negative eighth, if if there was a plus sign, we would not be able we, we would not have this answer over here. We would have something completely different. So please just make note that this we're doing this because this is one term here. All right, same idea down, down here. You have one term divided by one term with a bunch of negatives running around or whatnot. Now, negative 2 does not have a negative exponent. It's a negative number, but its exponent up here is a 1. Remember when it's not written up there, the exponent's understood to be a 1. So it's going to stay put. All right, so now you've got x to the negative 1 over x squared. Since we want to, since these are the like terms, we want to kind of group them together and say, all right, how do you deal with that? Well, since we're dividing and have the same base, you keep the base and you do top exponent minus bottom exponent. And then y, since you have y, uh, on both the top and the, and the bottom here, you're dividing and have the same base, so keep the base y and do top exponent minus bottom exponent. And then what do we get? Well, we get negative 2x to the negative 3y to there. Everybody know what this goes to? This goes to 4 plus 2, which is just 6. And then we say, all right, how's it look now? Yeah, we still have something with a negative exponent. Again, we just have one term, but one of those parts there has a negative exponent. So we should rewrite this as negative 2 y to the 6th all divided by x cubed. And now we're, we have all of our exponents positive. We're all ready to go with whatever else we need to do after this. Um, so. Uh, that's it for zero exponent and uh, negative exponents. Uh, if you have any questions, please let me know. Study well, and we will see you next time.